never fall to the dark side. Hello and welcome back to JBSR's 25 Days of Christmas. I really like the good and evil system in Fable, which was my first experience with that concept. However, the game as a whole was a bit underwhelming, so I was hoping for something more out of an RPG. Luckily, around that time came Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. I had never heard of Bioware before, but apparently they were kind of a big deal. And after playing KOTOR, I can see why. A deep story where your choices matter, interesting characters who, while not as deep as we see nowadays, are still great. I mean, come on, you get a Wookiee! The only downside to this game is it kind of destroyed the movies for me. Not that I don't like them, but in the same amount of time it takes to watch all three movies, I could do a quick playthrough of this, and I honestly like it a little bit more. Blasphemy, sure, but I think it proves what an amazing job Bioware did. And much like Fallout 3, this had a sequel done by Obsidian, and again, it had some improved elements. I generally thought the characters were better written in KOTOR 2, though your character's secret was probably the most contrived thing ever. Oh, I have an ability to influence them subconsciously with the Force? That's your best explanation as to why my crew has the same morality? Couldn't you have just chalked it up to loyalty? But either way, the two games are both great in their own ways, but KOTOR is just a bit better. Plus, that twist is rivaled by very few. It's a shame we won't get our trilogy, because the rights to Star Wars games are now... owned by EA. Just like Bioware. KOTOR 3 confirmed! Regardless, I'm pretty satisfied with the two games we got, and tomorrow we'll talk about a game that did get that elusive third entry in a series that most people wish they didn't. Ah, nuts.